Om, Om Swastiastu. Welcome to this week's Conversations with Community Pillars. My name is Scott Bauer, and I am a founder of Usada Bali. Today, I'm here with uh, Dr. Sujata Kikata of the Amirta City Ayurvedic Health Center in New Kuning. Uh, we're actually at her clinic at the moment, and um, we're going to discuss <clears throat> Ayurveda, the science of life, and the, the nutritional benefits of, of doing uh, Ayurvedic seasonal cleanses and Ayurvedic food as a path to, well, to health and, and wellness. Um, Dr. Sujata is not only a, 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 the proprietor and the founder of this clinic, but she's my business partner in Dapur Usada. She's a friend. Uh, she's actually someone I consult with for my own health. And so this is a real treat this week for me. Um, before I turn it over to you and, and um, your, your wisdom, I'm going to share just the G-rated the G -rated version of, of my previous journey, my, my, my other life, my alter ego. Uh, from my teens into my middle 40s, I had a very... Uh, unhealthy pursuit of intoxication where um, I invited in substances and foods and, and, and behaviors that uh, were not exactly uh, beneficial to my well-being or my health, yeah? And then due to some awakening of spirit in, in, in my 40s, I, I put down all the nonsense and I used that pursuit to pursue wellness. And uh, one of the first people that came into my life was, was, an, was an Ashtanga teacher. Mm -hmm. and, and he brought me to an Ayurvedic doctor in New York. And we, we, we be, he, he began to tell me to eat kitchari and do kitchari cleanses. And, and not to turn this into a long story, but at the time, I was diagnosed with stage four liver disease, which is pure precancerous. It was it was verified by a uh, a biopsy at Sloan Kettering, Mem Kettering Memorial Cancer Center in New York, and I underwent a year study with another with a group of other people where uh, we we engaged in holistic and healthy activities and and. At the end of that year, and the, and the, the study was monitored by a, a Chinese man who was a PhD in Chinese medicine and an MD. I had another biopsy, and, and I had reversed stage four to stage one within a year um, with, with scientific proof. Um, and I remember going to see the, the Chinese uh, the, the doctor and, and, and Sloan Kettering and he, he just looked at me and shook his head and he's, he's like, you're far and away the most improved participant in this study. And he just said, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. <laughs> and so I, Kitchery became, the Kitchery seasonal cleanse became part of my life and it, eating Kitchery for the next quite a few years became very much of a ritual for me, a routine, a practice in a way. So um, I'd like to start with like the history of Kitri, the benefits, but maybe tell us a little bit about your education and, and how you came to uh, Bali. And mm -hmm. I believe you stayed with members of the royal family when you came here or studied with them? Yeah, uh, Chokordarai was my early mentor when I came to Bali. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I spent uh, two years time with him. Uh, me and my husband together. So uh, some of you already know about Chakradarai. So he's a very well-known, very magical person who has a touching hand of healing, spirituality, all those things. Uh, we used to visit him every day, morning until evening, sit there in front of in his porch where lots of people would come by and he would treat. And then he would, when there's a break in between, he would teach us um, his uh, mudras and pranala. Um, you know how to move energy mm. and uh, those uh, uh, different mudras. They're similar to the yogic and um, uh, uh, principles, but a bit different. Uh, follow the same concept, so same way how energy works. And then we we would have lots of ceremonies. You know there are special full moon day, new moon day ceremonies. We would spend like whole night on the beach 
meditating, practicing mm. things and stuff. So it was a very amazing time. And uh, it's the very beginning. The tourism was uh, not that uh, you know, crowded like uh, what we have just before the COVID. So I had a great right. opportunity to spend time, learn, know about the culture, the local folk medicine, Jammu, um, all those things. So whatever I practice now, it, it has integration of many aspects. So uh, Ayurveda is a foundation. That's what um, I have a degree and uh, I'm a um, doctor in Ayurvedic medicine. Um, I went to study the Ayurveda and university in uh, India, Rajiv Gandhi Ayurvedic, uh, uh, Rajiv Gandhi Medical uh, University. And after I graduated, I spent two years with my another mentor from India, Dr. Ravindranath. Um, so he's the one who kind of showed the magic of Ayurveda, what Ayurveda can do. Mm. When you study in the university, okay, you learn about the theoretical aspect, but right. the practical application and being with the guru um, was very amazing. Yeah, like anything, when, when we implement the practices, that's when we actually learn experientially. Absolutely. This is the... Chakorta Rai is the one who passed this year? Yes, yeah. that's correct. Yeah, yeah what mm -hmm. a great opportunity mm -hmm. to uh, to blend Ayurveda with the Indonesian version of Ayurveda, which is, which is Usada. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Wow, that, that's really beautiful. So, um, Kitri, where, where is its origin? I, I remember, mm -hmm. I recall, and I don't know if this is myth or not, my Ashtanga teacher in New York, he, he told me a story about in certain areas of India, there's a lot of people that live to more than 100. Mm -hmm. And they went and asked them all, like, what was their secret? Mm -hmm. And, and um, there was many answers, but far and above, the most common answer was Kitchari. Mm -hmm. Um, Kitchari is very well known in every household in um, in India. Uh, I think Kitchari is a meal that's prepared when you're sick. Right. So if you're sick, if somebody is sick at home, so mothers prepare Kitchari for you. The reason being is when you're sick, your ability to digest food becomes very little. So you can't digest food. So you want to give something which is simple and easy digestible, still gives you the, the basic nutrient that you need to keep your immune system working well. Mm -hmm. And Kitchari contains all those things. So it contains, if you look at the ingredients, it contains mung bean, which is a, a, a highly nutritious, protein-rich food, but it's a very strong liver cleansing. Mm. That's the reason why you had a great result in following the Kitchari diet when your liver was not doing mm. well. And then it contains uh, whole grains, carbohydrate in the form of rice and all the spices like uh, cumin, coriander, sometimes even fennel seeds, uh, ginger, turmeric, black pepper. So these are the basic spices that you need to keep your digestive system working. You know, w when we talk about nutrients, uh, we usually think, OK, what are the superfoods? What are the highly concentrated food right. we can give? That's a wrong concept, according to myself. Um, if you're looking into nourishing yourself, you don't really want to just to look into what's available. You know, what's the best 10 superfoods I can eat? What if that you can't digest and absorb? Mm. And that's what happens when you have a, a health condition. You know, you're sick, um, your liver is not working, or you, you, are, you have lots of acidity in your system. Your digestive system is not working well. That so, explains why when we're sick, we're not, we die. I was just a little bit unwell for mm -hmm. a couple of days. Yeah. I didn't want to eat. Yeah, you don't I, I want like to eat. I like make myself eat the, because the digestion stopped. Absolutely, because the attention is not in your digestive system. So attention ah. is survival now. Here, your immune system need to work. So all the attention is there, fighting against whatever is invaded. You know, trying to uh, keep on the physiology when your organs or your cells are not functioning well. So here, your nutrition need to be easily available. You don't want to give extra work to your digestive system to you know break it down, absorb, extract. And if you're going to give you this ten ingredient superfood cocktail of food, your body is not going to use it. Yeah, and, and, and it'll try to digest it. It will steal the energy from Absolutely. the nervous system, from the immune system that's trying to fix the exactly. body. Exactly, and you're not able to digest it the way that your body can absorb it. Mm. Hence, that becomes a residue that in Ayurveda we call ama, ama, which is an interruption in biochemical transformation of the food in your body in different levels, in your digestive system level, in your liver, in your cellular level. 
and that residue lingers around being not seen by your cells or your body as a nutrition nor as a unwanted substance so that lingers around blocking irritating your cells you know and triggering inflammatory mechanism yeah it becomes toxic yes yeah um so before we go into the details of of what I think are really important, which is the seasonal cleanses. Um, we find ourselves in Bali and in Indonesia and in most of the world uh, in this state of contraction where we're, um, some of us are locked down, some of us are, are, uh, are asked to stay home, we're asked to minimize personal contact with non-family members and it creates a lot of stress. It creates a lot of fear, um, some remorse, I think. It has, it has, it seems to generate a lot of uh, afflictive emotion. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we only need to look on social media to see that expressed. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just the human condition of suffering. This is what it causes. Let's talk a little bit about um, stress and, and, and anger and, and um, fear and uncertainty and how they work on the, the holistic body and, and create imbalances in, in the doshas, mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the ability to digest. Mm -hmm. um, Ayurveda looks not only digestion of food. Ayurveda, when we talk about digestion, it's digesting your emotions as well. Mm. Um, all the experience that your sense organs goes through, that's also need to be digested. And if that's not being digested, processed, understood, accepted, or a, any way of we come into acceptance and being ease with it, that also produces ama. And then together with the food ama, together with the mind ama, or the emotions ama, makes a nice combination to manifest that into a disease as different emotions have affinity in different parts of our body. For mm. example, if we have grief as sadness, you know, the energy is related to your lung area. And uh, if it is related to anger, resentment, frustration, your liver is going to be an organ of, um, that's going to, you know, have an influence on it. Uh, a lot of fear and existential fear or fear of many things and scared, your bladder and kidney is going to be affected. So, mm. so on, there are many, energies have affliction to different organs and different systems so say for example you know th this has been going now almost for two years everybody's suffering who yes. even people who had a strong mind good yoga meditation practice to give a barrier we all are suffering one or other time we, we have had our low including me so um, it, this is becomes much more important that like you know the mind and the spirit is uplifted and um, lift, uplifting the spirit, okay, there are parts of yoga, meditation, pranayama, all those things, but food influences your mind. Right. Ayurveda recognizes mind as your sixth sense organ. Right. And whatever we eat, it's reflected through your mind too. So um, emotions need to be digested, food need to be digested. So that means we need to be constantly mindful of what I eat, what I involve myself in, what kind of activities I do. Um, whether that comes from a total understanding of whether it's nurturing me, making a difference for other people or constantly indulging in one kind of activities like either it's a social media or you know now what we left we don't have much time to go out and spend time in the nature and do. Right. But in a way to say it's we are lucky that we're in Bali the restrictions are not that and we are surrounded Severe. by nature it's mm. not like being in a big cities like New York or you know right. other part of the world. Um, so, we really need to consider how the thoughts, emotions, feelings affects our mind. We need to digest that. So, there are food that we can use. Kitchri is one of the way to cleanse your mind from not having, because Kitchri is considered to be sattvic. So this is when we come, when we talk about cleaning our mind, we want to bring the mind to the state of sattvic quality. So consuming food which are sattvic in nature. Lots of fruits and vegetables in a vegan diet is pretty sattvic, but how we prepare and how we eat them can determine whether it is ends up being sattvic to your mind or not. Mm. So if you're going to eat food which is like a frozen food or food which is combined with too many ingredients, it becomes rajasic, right. which aggravates the mind. You know, we lose that peace and calm and harmony. So 
uh, other than helping easy digestible, easy nutritious food, khichri, khichri is also highly sattvic food. Right. So if you're into a meditation practice or if you want to fast, you know, khichri is option. According to Ayurveda or in, in a Hindu philosophy, fasting means being close to oneself. Either it's being close to yourself, you know, self-introspection, right. quietness, praying, meditation, or it also means being close to divine. So when you do that, you eat very sattvic food, just a fruit diet or some simple freshly made vegetable or fruit juices, kitchri. And the, the cleanse that we have planned in the seasonal cleanse in Dapur, Usada is it, it contains all these concepts. So it can be it, it contains a simple very sattvic dal soup, kitchri, uh, also very special juice, this kushmanda juice. Kushmanda means it's like a celestial egg which ah. contains the consciousness of the universe. Um, it's called Kushmanda in Ayurveda. Uh, also, it's called winter melon uh, or ash gourd. Very sattvic, tridosha balancing, uh, reduces inflammation, cleans gut. So the cleanse is going to start with that juice. It already kind of sets the awareness into each and every cell of your body. And then we have other juices, the herbal teas, morning and evening. And then to give some work for your digestive system simple and not extremely you know starving or extremely fasting so kitris in the m midday time and then we have the the clear dal soup in the evening time so it gives you right enough energy it's not extreme so it can be just designed to anybody can go through and i rather says even though how clean your diet or how vegan you are how mindful and exercising everybody should do cleanse time to time yeah it just takes you off this rut. So it takes you off from doing everything what you do. So it gives you a chance for you to see things which you haven't been used to see. Because when we do monotonously same thing again and again, we lack perception. So this is a time that we all can take a break from whatever we've been doing and then to do something. So from that, something can come up that will give awareness to us. Yeah. It's... Um <clears throat> The emotional stress, the, the eating unhealthy, the, the worry, this is what I call dis-ease, it's mm -hmm. discontent, it's discomfort. And as you explained, when we put them together, it can manifest in physical disease, yeah? Absolutely. And, and, and it's, it's uh, through that creation of ama, toxins, mm -hmm. that build up in the body that, that throw everything out of balance, yeah? Um, interesting, you, uh, you, when you describe fasting as, as uh, being close to yourself, it, it reminded me of the, the fourth uh, niyama in, in, in yoga, mm -hmm. yeah? swadhyaya, yep. uh, self-investigation, self, self, self yep. self-study. Mm -hmm. I was recently uh, at a... Uh, a um, quantum wellness convention a couple of years ago in in, uh, in outside of Shanghai, China, and there was a lot of Chinese medicine involved. And the Chinese medicine philosophy is very similar to Ayurveda, where they treat the holistic being. Yeah. And he said he in, in the beginning in the first day, uh, Frederick said something. He said, self care, self investigation leads to self love. Self-love leads to self-care, and self-care is health care, uh -huh. yeah? And yep. like Ayurveda, <clears throat> Chinese medicine is preventive, mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, sorry yep. to all the doctors out there, the medical world, but Western medicine is basically, it's sick care. Yeah, let's you, fix when it is a problem. Yeah, yeah well, let's fix it when it's already a problem. Yeah. <clears throat> Where are you that in Chinese medicine? They're more about maintaining balance and wellness. Yeah, uh, the primary intention of Ayurveda is prevention, and it it's, it has an aspect of medical system. But before that, it's a knowledge about life. Right. What do you need to know about your body, your life, and the life around us? Yeah. And how to understand this? It's a, it's a spiritual way of understanding. Right. Not just thinking about your body separately. Not just thinking about your mind because. One of my teacher, in a funny way, he said, um, you know, people asked him lots of questions when he travels around the world and so, oh, do you have psychology in Ayurveda? 
and he says we don't separate them it's yeah, together yeah, it's... but if you look into the mind on its own you become psychotic he kind of said it in a fine <laughs> way because you can't separate body and mind are together in a everyday basis what happens in your body is connected to your mind you can't separate it yeah so everything influences yeah so hence the combining these two is very important yeah you reminded me of dr frawley's book ayurveda and, and the, the mind. mind it's such a it's such a masterpiece yeah mm -hmm. so it was in july that you and i got together and and, and we were on we we realized there was a pkm and we decided to you know create this offering this this uh, cleanse that, that Dapo Rosada is offering for delivery. Uh, we have the three day, the five day, and the seven day. And, and you seem to have gone through the three day, the beginning one, yeah? Mm -hmm. And the ingredients. Tell us about the second phase, mm -hmm. the, the fourth, fifth, and sixth day, mm -hmm. and what that involves, and, mm -hmm. and what the ingredients. Um, we created these three different stages depending on, you know, if somebody is very beginner and they right. do not know. So I want to have an opportunity for these people also to try and see, you know, what they can get out of it. Uh, seven days can still be ideal because the reason being is it takes one day each. We have seven different kinds of tissues in the body which makes up the, this uh, whole system. So uh, it takes one day for you know the nutrients or a cleansing effect to affect your rasa dhatu or a rakta dhatu or mamsa dhatu so different tissue that ayurveda recognizes which forms the body so uh, the three days are basic so just you can get a taste of it you start feeling better so the longer you do or the seven days you do the completion of the whole cleansing of the different layers of your body takes place mm. Uh, um, there's a basic one for the first three days and uh, in the after the three days um, the juice is going to change so it's going to work much more deeper in a specific uh, system like either it would be working on and your liver or uh, your uh, blood um, and then the the last the say five to seven days one would work on to what we call shukradhatu which is related to the reproductive system because I read the sees as your reproductive tissue is an essence of well-being of all other tissues working because you carry the memory of your whole gene, your whole genetics in mm. the sperm and the woman of a man mm. and a woman. So for that to nourish, you need to have the seventh day. It's like a, you know, your well-being seeping down into each and every layer and the final result is seen in the reproductive cells of the mm. tissues of your in body. In the ojas. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I noticed you added uh, a complimentary uh, consultation mm -hmm. uh, with with people that that commit to the to the longer um, period of the cleanse, mm -hmm. and and let's talk about that for a minute. But before you do, when you were when you were talking about the different levels of the tissue mm -hmm. uh, of how the how the seasonal Ayurvedic cleanse works. It reminds, it reminded me of, of Patabi Joyce's system. Like first series is the, is the basics. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you go into the nervous system with second series mm -hmm. and then it, it's different effects on the energetic body as you become more committed to, yes. to the practice yeah. yeah yeah you know we cannot jump to the ninth stair right. without climbing yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. rest below right yeah, so yeah. it is it is important for us to you know develop that stability stability in the tissue and stability in your mind to you know harvest the deeper so you know we we as much as human mind craves for things to be faster and quicker it's like you, you, you start a building process of your house. If you don't wait for the cement to set and you know, solidify, you build on the top, it's going to crash. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, need to, we need to build a firm founda foundation mm -hmm. before we build skyscrapers. Otherwise, if the earth shakes, like sometimes it does in Bali, yep. uh, the building's going to fall down. Yep. And, and I think right now, particularly in Indonesia, the, the earth is shaking a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's some rajasic vibration in the air of uncertainty and a little bit of fear and and worry and understandably uh, financial insecurity. Yeah, so 
I, I feel like it's a, it's a gift to yourself to um, do, take this moment to, to do the self-investigation and the self-care and the self-love. Uh, you know, in, 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 in 2021, uh, there's a lot of, uh, ma there's many offerings of ways to fast and uh, quick fixes for your health and, and, and um, I'm not saying that they're all uh, n not good. Some of them are not good, yeah. Mm -hmm. But for me, um, it's the longev. It's the it's the lineage of Ayurveda. It's the lineage. It's it's an accumulative lineage, Ayurveda. I know it's on the palm leaves in mm -hmm. India. Dr. Naram showed me some of his palm leaves when he was still alive. And each practitioner in generations adds new information mm -hmm. to the, to the uh, uh, let's say, database of, of, of ancient Ayurveda as they encounter new ways to treat people mm -hmm. and new ways to um, face the challenges that, that, that evolving human, human beings mm -hmm. uh, uh, encounter. So I think we just, let, let's just close and, and reflect on um, <clears throat> your your advice or your guidance for people that are maybe have long COVID, maybe are contracted, mm -hmm. maybe people who are recovered from COVID or want to strengthen the immunity or the resistance of the lungs uh, and, and the immune system. Uh, I know, I know the, the six senses, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and maybe we talk about the different tastes flavors mm -hmm. um, particularly if you you know it's because Ayurveda is a very individual based science so um, talking about okay you know there's so much talks going on okay immunity increasing it's feel people talk about let's increase immunity it's like almost like go and buy something from the um, no shelf and increase right. immunity the immunity not only just look, it's it's not something okay vitamins vitamin c vitamin d all those things helps um i read the direct links immunity to, uh, immunity to how well your digestive system is working right mm. so a lot of sciences have shown that immunity is related to good healthy gut you know 90 percent of your immune system is located here right so, uh, you know, it's, it's an age-old concept in Ayurveda. So if you digest your food well and then you give the food which is nutritious, which suits more for your constitution. You know, why we stress on, okay, for your constitution means that a certain group of food gives you the nutrition that you need for your body to function. So we all know we have a very unique way of physiology, a very unique way our digestive system, our nervous system, our emotions work, right? right? So there's this reason. So the way you take care of it is also need to be very unique. We have different machines if you talk in the language of, you know, kitchen equipment. So they all have their own way to maintain right. and service and how much you can fill in and how much you, you know, how long you run the machine, all those things. So. Mm. Why don't, why don't we think that this apply, applies for the human beings too, ah. right? So the, the time of the day, the cardiac rhythm, you know, food, spices, we all have a very unique way. I think it's not that difficult to figure that out, what works best for me. So it's just a fine tuning. You know, so once we kind of know that and you don't, you know, if you're very connected to yourself and you're very honest with yourself and not looking outside to see the solution for, you know, my health and well-being, you already know it. It's not necessary. You have to see an Ayurvedic doctor to determine your constitution. Right. But if you're totally confused, I suggest you go and see one and then they can, you know, make you make sense out of what, why certain things works and why certain things doesn't work for you. Mm. And then you could, you know, follow more on that way of, you know, adapting your food intake, kind of food you choose, lifestyle that that's made for you. And once you do this, your immunity is already taken care. You don't right. really need to do particular pop a pill to increase your immunity. 
and um, and and this concept of nutrition is you know we have a many different area to look into it okay the six tastes of the food plays a very important role we don't recommend to eat mono diet either it's just eating raw food or eating only fruits or eating only meat so it's combination of all and knowing when to eat um, what and time of eating quantity of eating all those things matters when determines that your ability to digest the food and absorb the food and that turning into you know nutrition ogres and ogres is immunity right. yeah so this is what we look into and if you fall sick if you're not hungry then you need to find a way to you know increase this hunger or the agni we call in ayurveda uh, with simple spices of ginger garlic um, or rosemary uh, thyme um even a bit of black pepper chili lemon juice all those things and our apple cider vinegar all those things can increase your agni and then eating small quantity of food and you don't want to eat anything heavy like dairy wheat nuts even they are com- considered under the healthy food but anything is heavy you're not able to digest when you're sick so you want to have maybe chicken soup or vegetable mm. broths kichri uh, pureed soups uh, something light treat yourself like a baby you know as simple as if i could say uh, so if you could do that you can build up your system and you know after covid or any infectious disease your body is depleted and you need to do something we call rejuvenation or rasayana so you know some gentle massages baths um definitely here you can do the vitamin supplements and stuff uh nourishing food care rest uh and uh, you know not think okay i've been staying home for 5 days and now i take my motorbike and you know spin around um <laughs> ubud or bali so it might be depleting yeah so y- you want to start like a baby step treat yourself like a baby that's all i could say yeah that's brilliant yeah uh thank you this has been really informative and really um yeah it's a pleasure to 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 do this with you thank and, you and 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 those of you um If you are interested in our cleanse, yeah, uh you can you can reach out to Dr. Usada on their WhatsApp number which is on our on our website and Facebook and we can arrange the delivery to your home for your you or your family. Um and and so um thank you. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank we'll you. We'll close in the Indian way. Yes, namaste. Namaste.